in isn't any it, trade the case, agreement. Prime Minister, that the rights that you and I had to live, work and love across a continent of 28 nations is going to be deprived to our young people because of your obsession with immigration? No. And I refer you to Article 15. Hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Why am I showing this select committee meeting from 2018? Well, I'll get to that later. But let's get into this Ladies and Committee meeting from 2018, where then Prime Minister Theresa May was grilled by SNP MP Pete Wishard about her obsession with immigration. Uh, can I turn to immigration? And I think one of your most... The one you've achievement about this deal you've, you've most crowed about, I think, is the ending of freedom of movement. Now, Scotland's, Scotland's population growth is almost totally predicated on inward immigration. It's absolutely vital to our population demography and to our economy. Um, can I just get this absolutely abundantly clear that what you will be doing is stopping people below a threshold of £30,000 from coming to the United Kingdom, and that will mainly be what you call people with lower skills and young people at the beginning of the career. Is, is that roughly the understanding of what you're trying to achieve by ending freedom of movement? No, what, I'm, what, I'm, uh, what we're doing is delivering on the vote that took place. Uh, ending free movement, I believe, was a key issue for many people here in the United Kingdom, uh, and we will be ending free movement, we'll bring an end to free movement. What this will enable us to do is to put into place an immigration system which applies to the whole of uh, you know, the world outside the United Kingdom. Up until now, we've been able to have immigration rules for countries outside the EU, but not for countries inside the EU. We will be able to have a single immigration system that covers all of those. Uh, we asked the Independent Migration Advisory Committee to look into this issue, um, to consider the shape and form that such an immigration system could, should take, taking into account the requirements of the UK economy. They did that, and their proposal was that rather than having a tier two cap, a number set, uh, which we've had up to now for outside the European Union, we should move to a skills-based system uh, and the uh, with the proposed salary threshold, uh, which would determine well, those, uh, that's determine really, those skills. That's really, really helpful, but it's a reciprocal agreement. So what we do to European Union nationals, they will do to us. So that means that people with most skills from the United Kingdom, young people at the beginning of their careers will equally not be allowed the same rights of access to the European Union? Uh, no. Well, first of all, you've uh, jumped to an assumption there. Uh, what I was talking about was the immigration system that will be independently put into place by but, the but United no, Kingdom government. But my question government. is, Europe will you do have... to us what we do to well, them. Is you're that making correct? an assumption. You, you, I have to say, I don't think that the... Uh, so, they're not, you, so you're expecting, yet you're expecting the, the young uh, Brits to go abroad as they have just now? Without. Well, we've, we've been looking at a variety of, uh, a variety of issues uh, in relation to uh, young people particularly. One of the areas that we've looked at is the sort of programmes such as Erasmus, which uh, have enabled the uh, you know, students to take advantage of membership of the European Union. But if you look at the, uh, the uh, section within the political declaration, you will see that, of course, uh, we will be looking at uh, mo the, the mobility uh, arrangements that are in isn't any it, trade the case, agreement. Prime Minister, that the rights that you and I had to live, work and love across a continent of 28 nations is going to be deprived to our young people because of your obsession with immigration? No. And I refer you to Article 53... The parties agree to consider conditions for entry and stay for purposes such as research, study, training and youth exchanges. How could, so you're not ending freedom of movement then? Yes, we are ending freedom of movement. We are ending freedom of movement. Freedom, freedom of movement gives, an, gives automatic rights to people living in the European Union that are not available to people outside the European Union. In future, we will end that uh, automatic right that comes with free movement. What we will put in place is our system of immigration rules, which will apply across all countries, uh, and it will be skills-based rather than based on the country that somebody comes from. It will be applied from. from the European Union too. Now, the reason why I showed this was for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I heard this on the James O'Brien show the other day, and if I had the equipment in 2018, I definitely would have covered this committee meeting back then without a doubt. And secondly, I have seen Theresa May all over the media doing interviews, trying to rehabilitate her character somewhat. Well, when James O'Brien covered this, 
he received calls from lots of people saying that they have no sympathy because the way she handled Brexit was the catalyst to the Brexit we have today and trying to treat the ERG as serious contributors. Yeah, can you believe it? And watching the whole meeting, they're right, because she was poor in the meeting for sure. But the real big catalyst for me for the Brexit we have today is definitely David Cameron. He gambled with a referendum instead of having the guts to stare down these clowns. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. And if you've got something out of the video, give it a like. And if you enjoy stuff from uh, select committee meetings right down to the House of Commons, subscribe. And it just leaves me to say have a wonderful weekend and take care, my friends.